these two very successful and trendy Netflix shows actually have Asian male lead love interests in them. So guess what? Does that mean we're gonna watch them? Yeah, we gotta at least talk about it. We're talking about EXO Kitty, which is for a younger demographic, almost like an in English K drama for high school international students. And then we're talking about for an older demographic, a tourist guide to love, which is actually set in Vietnam. And the guy is falling in love with Rachel Lay Cook from She's All That, Freddie Prince Jr. 90s. Hey, Vietnamese guys getting some love. All right, guys, we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about if it's good for Asian male representation. We're going to dive into the comment section. Please hit that like button. Check out other episodes of the Hot Pop Boys. Maybe pan-Asian men are trendy right yeah, now. Yeah, I would say, man, from silly to serious, you could say this is silly, but after all the false starts, Andrew, of in the 80s and 90s where Asian guys thought they were about to get on and then got pushed down by, you know, mainstream media, maybe... This movement is in the serious category now. Let's get into the comments section. Somebody said, yay, I love Exo Kitty because it finally explains the complexities of being Hapa. Because basically she, I believe the actress is half Chinese and half Irish, but she's playing half Korean and she's going back to her motherland. But then actually there's a love triangle with Minho. Yeah, and obviously it's a spinoff of To All the Boys I Loved Before. And I do feel like, David, there's a sense that this show is using Asian male leads in South Korea to kind of make up for the fact that there wasn't a lot of Asian male leads into all the boys I love before. Yeah, do you feel like that was the leadership or the producers going, okay, okay, well, we got to give us, you know, give them one because we kind of caught a lot of flack for that in the press and they do have some legitimate arguments, so let's give them this one. Yeah, uh, I don't know if that was the whole reason. I definitely think that that was a factor, but of course, they're also factoring the whole South Korean wave, the Hallyu, the K-pop, K-drama wave. So it, this show kind of fits into that. And not only that, I believe there have been several articles that came out in like CNN and other publications recently where there's actually a lot of sex tourism or dating tourism of non-Asian women going back to South Korea to get with South Korean men. So it's almost like believable enough they could totally sell this plot line. Yeah, I am a South Korean man. Ha <laughs> ha. Somebody said <laughs> dramas, K drama set in high school are all about grades and parents and filial piety and soft love. The American ones are way more spicy and edgy and deal with way more adult themes. Oh uh, my gosh, compare this to Euphoria. Obviously, you can't compare everything to Euphoria. Well, Euphoria would be like the 10 out of 10. Let's just say XO Kitty is at like 7 out of 10, but most. Asian, all across Asia in general, high school dramas are at like a three or a two out of 10. But here's the truth, Andrew. Life over there, especially at a high school level, is not the same as high school over here, Andrew. Even in our public high school, I remember, you know, I'm not saying this to brag because this is unfortunate, suicides. Mm -hmm. I know somebody who got killed in high school in the streets. Mm -hmm. uh, all types of X-rated things going down on school grounds, off school grounds illegal substances so, 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 being so, so, so. sold. All these things are not allowed in high school in Asia. Well, like, well, well, completely also, not allowed. Not only that, but this show also takes place, I believe, at an international high school. So it's probably going to be a lot nicer. I'm pretty sure the teen pregnancy rate is a little bit lower there. But I would say that an international high school would have craziness more, would still be more crazy than a local high school in South Korea. That's probably true. That's true. Somebody said, uh, I watch for the Korean culture, but it's only about K-pop and it's not super deep. I feel like it was written by a Korea boo who's, uh, you know, loves and sort of obsesses over Korean culture, but doesn't really know it all the way through. Yeah, through. it's interesting that this show kind of is using some of that Korea boot culture, but it might not satisfy the people who are actually into true traditional Korean culture, where maybe it doesn't deal as much with the family and stuff like that. It's more of just on the surface level, adolescent, you know, younger generation. Right, there, I'm sure there's a lot of egg yo and these <laughs> sort of um, pop cultural themes. What do you think about this, Andrew? Because in America, people have always been writing martial arts flicks with, it's not that they don't understand anything, but obviously they don't understand the culture through and through. So people are writing something kind of like with a general idea, but not all the details fleshed out. Is this just natural of a Western piece made in Asia? Mm. Like, is this just like expected? Because of course, it wouldn't be fully fleshed out through and through. I guess just like Asian pieces filmed in America would not understand American culture to its core either. Yeah, it's actually an American show, but takes place in South Korea. Does it even actually take place in South Korea? I'm sure they shot part of it. In, I don't know if they shot the whole thing there, but it's not a South Korean production. 
Right. Somebody said, let's be real here. How did Minho find Madison, the redheaded girl, attractive? How come Asian male leads always have to take a discount when it comes to non-Asian women? Basically, this comment was saying that Minho, the actor, or some of these guys like Day, which I guess there's another Korean Chad, South Korean Chad called Day, like they wouldn't get, they're, they're taking a looks discount when it comes to the non-Asian women that they're dating versus the hotness of a girl they could get that was also Asian. Dude, this is a really funny comment. I mean, uh, without getting too much into it, people, I think that it's kind of part of the process. And I think that anytime uh, you are dating, if you're from a foreign country and you're dating someone from the Western world, the because the Western the, world ranks higher, the globally, higher right? ranking world, then sometimes you take a discount on looks. It's kind of like a lot of. You know, typically you would say you see some Asian women who are better looking than their like white or European counterpart. Right, because the they're taking a discount too, right. but for the guy. Exactly. And the guy because, is getting a, a better deal. Yeah, I guess like as far as looks wise, a better deal for sure. So of course, um, yeah, I mean, I think I know some guys who kind of talk about this on the internet. First of all, I don't think that the actress is bad looking. I don't think she typifies like a super beautiful bombshell girl right, right that school. ain't the hopper that people are thinking about when they're thinking of a nah, but she's cute she's cute but yeah i mean obviously uh yeah I, this is a conversation that you i mean this is a real societal dynamic i would agree with to be honest but it is yeah, what it, it is makes sense. somebody said uh you know itaewon class is a hundred times better why would i watch exo kitty when i can just watch itaewon class mm, i mean shout out you, to park sojun what, one of my doppelgangers what do you think that people like is this a fair comparison or is this right is it wrong is this actually opening up the market for more k-drama consumption nah, as what? a little like uh wedge in the door or are, are people viewing I, this I, wrong i think it's totally possible that the korean made shows are better on average because right. that they put so much effort into it like i mean we could go on and on about why the korean shows maybe are better made but yeah i'm i'm i'm, I'm i don't doubt that they have better storylines somebody said asian men have finally made it we are the money makers positive asian male rep is here um somebody said you got to calm down bro we were down by 50 points and now we're only down by 25 points in the basketball game yeah it's great to cut the lead by 25 points but we're still down by 25 hey man progress is progress but shout out to the southeast asian guys you know david growing up in seattle I always thought our Southeast Asian friends, especially the older ones that I knew, they were the suave Asians that we knew growing up. They were the up. swag like, Asians, Like, this was, yeah. no, but even swaggy and suave with women. Like, the Filipino guys and even some of the Vietnamese guys, they were, like, better talking to girls at that time growing up. I knew up. a super hood Cambodian with braids that had a pretty hot blonde girlfriend. It from West Seattle. Yeah, Shout because they West just Seattle. acted different. They just didn't act yeah, like they didn't the act Asians, like, it, like, they, like they definitely did not act stereotypical. That's what might be a Seattle Bay Area thing, though. It's very regional, depending on what you're saying. I heard there's that same thing in Canada as well. Somebody said, uh, this is good to get a win for Southeast Asian males because typically representation is East Asian or even more specifically, either Korean or Hapa. Yeah. That's actually true. For sure. And mostly Hapas and Koreans get on. Um, but this kind of leads us to another comment where somebody said, Man, Chinese guys are never going to get on. All right, guys, about the Chinese guy representation. First of all, there are plenty of Chinese guy actors. Simu's getting on. We can go down the list, people who are even part Chinese. But I will say, tell you this, that the geopolitical tensions and the trade tensions with China right now doesn't make it any better. They are not basing any shows in Shanghai or Beijing. There's no Beijing love story, tourist guide to love in China. Chundu. Oh, but like, hey, shout out to that one movie with Hayden Penitary and Ken Learn, though. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah that was like, still Shanghai Kiss. Or was that Daniel Hennig? Yeah, anyway. yeah Shang Shanghai Kiss. Or when, anyways, there, there are some shows in the background. But uh, what I'm saying is that obviously, currently, right now, it is going to be hard to do a in China romantic comedy show. Right, right. Like, it's just not. You're saying like, where the guy's like, yeah, welcome to Beijing. I want to show you the beauty of the hutong. No, no, no. <laughs> maybe, maybe the show is like the Chinese guy. Uh, get, no, the woman gets sent over there as like the daughter or as a diplomat oh. and falls in love with one of the CCP's like uh, Yeah, officials. no, there could be some good geopolitical layers oh. with some spies. Oh, that guy is Trump. the translator. He's like Xiao Ping is the translator for... Uh, oh, come on. Girl. His name wouldn't be Xiao Ping. Uh, Give him a better Zhu, looking name Zhu, than that. Like Zhang, Zhang, Zhang Li. Zhuge Liang. Yeah, Zhuge Liang. Yeah. <laughs> 
Um, somebody says, why does Netflix use these not very hot actors for their shows? Hollywood would never do this. They were refer referring both to Exo Kitty and Tourism Guide for Love. Obviously, the actors, they're good looking enough to be actors, but I guess within the actor context, just like you say somebody sucks for being in the NBA, but they're still in the NBA, they're not like the best looking. Let me tell you something about how many productions are being made. The reason why people get certain actors are for a number of reasons. Some of them can just be the acting. Some of it can just be the looks. But think about it. You're filming these things over a span of two, three months. This person has to have the scheduling and the stamina to even play that role. So to be honest, I think that nowadays, especially for Netflix, they're going to take a little bit more of a relatable look and a better actor that's available over somebody who's just like super good looking. Cause think about, you could turn on, uh, what are the Lover's Island or whatever that show is called and just see a bunch of hot people like make out with each other. I would like to see the Vietnamese guy paired up with like an Amber Heard though. I'm Amber Heard wasn't available for this, okay? <laughs> like, they didn't she, have the she, budget. She's in jail. Um, somebody said, uh, yeah, it was pretty good, but very predictable. But overall, it was nice to see foreigners speaking English in a high-budget production enjoying the scenes of Vietnam. Uh, David, uh, there was this one movie called The Lover back in the day. Someone brought this up because we need more movies where the Asian woman chases after the Asian man, just like Anna and the King and Chow Yun-Fat or The Lover. Yeah, I mean... I think that this speaks to something that I got to talk about. There have been things all the way since the 1950s with Sesa Hasegawa, right? All the way to, uh, man, I forgot his name, Dustin Wynn, to, uh, I forgot his name, Justin, Jason Lee Scott, to Brandon Lee, which is Bruce Lee's son, obviously Bruce Lee in the 60s, late 60s. There have been moments where it looked like Asian dudes were going to get pushed to be leading guys, uh, even all the way to Aaliyah and Jet Lee with Romeo Must Die, mm. they cut out the kiss the corrupter Mira Sorvino and Chow yeah. Yun-Fat, but then it sort of died. And that's why I sort of caution people to be like, finally, we made it. Asian men are getting representation because there have been incidents in the past where there was a moment where they're making three, four, five movies in that direction. And then the whole thing reverses. Right. So you feel like that Asian male representation, or at least let's just say Asian males being sexy in media, there's actually waves. Like it hasn't just been only a downslope or a slow incline. It's been like a little bit up, down, up, down, 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 down. Uh, now yeah. it's on the up. So what are the factors that go into it? I'll tell you this. I don't think that Asian American support makes or breaks any of this, to be honest. Oh. I think there's a lot of factors that are outside of our control, to be honest, because we make up such a small population, uh, you know, ratio. Oh, anyway, you Andrew, let's get into the takeaways. Is this great for Asian males? Because obviously right now it looks like another uptrend on the roller coaster. How do we prevent it from cycling down or do, or do we? I think, so the relatable looks of all these actors, I think it plays a positive because overall like yes you could have found technically like a better looking more handsome asian guy but i kind of think that uh like kind of like making a regular looking more regular looking asian dude as a lead it helps a lot more right these it are helps. like really good looking regular guys they're yeah. not in that like ultra they walk in the yeah. room everybody goes oh guys man, there's good. not a million beautiful people who can act and are available and want to do it you know what I'm saying? They're, like, you still have to pull from a pool of actors. Yeah. I mean, as far as the China trend goes, Andrew, are we just going to see nothing involving China that's positive? <laughs> like, I mean, to be honest, it seems uh, like it. I don't, I don't know if there's going to be, like, a mainland Chinese How about guy a Singapore, Taiwan, Hong Kong thing? How about a, uh, an adjacent Chinese place? Yeah, man. This one's tough, man. This is I definitely think this is one that is affected by geopolitics, for sure. For, for sure. sure. For sure. For sure. I mean, but also... Not only is it affected by geopolitics, there's no, like, trend like the dating tourism from, like, girls from Eastern Europe and Poland, like, going to South yeah, Korea. Yeah, China's just a different place, but... Anyways, guys, you let me know in the comments down below how you feel about these shows, right? I mean, like, is this... Big progress we should celebrate? Is a little progress? Obviously, there's a lot of shows coming out there. Are you going to watch it? I would say I might check out Tours Guide to Love, you know? Yeah, I just hope they make more, and I hope it keeps going. I don't... Like I said, I used to tell people, oh, yeah, go out and support these things. I don't think Asian-American views on Netflix are going to, like, really boost it unless you write, like, some sort of hyper-viral think piece supporting it, and then the execs read it. But, yeah, shows like this, The Sympathizer, they all help. Yeah. Physical 100. Yeah. All right, everybody, let us know in the comments down below what you think. Until next time, we out. Peace. Peace.